Parenting on YouTube is a slippery slope. Not many people can handle gaining popularity with their kids, and sometimes the content they put out to entertain others goes too far. A couple years ago, the channel Daddy05 was exposed for abusing their kids, and there was this one video that I'll never forget, and looking back at it now, it made no sense, but they wanted to play a prank on their kid by making a mess in their room and then getting mad at them as if they did it. There's so many contradicting factors to that that they didn't even realize how stupid of an idea that was. And this wasn't just like, Bradley, now we taught you better, son. This was like if Hitler was asking why why he lost World War II. What the hell is that? What the fuck? What the fuck? And that resulted in two kids being removed from their house. If you look at what they're doing now, it's the exact same thing, only it's behind a paywall which is the only way these people can make money and the only way they've been trying. Three years ago, they tried doing the exact same thing while on probation, only to have to shut down the site because it violated that. But they were a prime example of what not to do for any future families thinking of having a good old goof with their kid. It's one thing to mess with them, but if you're making them cry for the sole purpose of entertaining others, that's a level of projecting I don't even want to start to understand. But it only gets worse because another family on YouTube has been flying under the radar until somebody finally reached their breaking point. I don't know if you guys have heard about the channel 8 Passengers, but they were a family of 8 who started making videos back in 2015. And they were like any other family channel, filming the kids, shopping trips, even the embarrassing moments. Whoa, whoa. I really like you. I saw you in my dreams last night. <laughs> But it has recently come out that the mom and her business partner have been arrested for child abuse. Police received a call at almost 11 o'clock at night on August 30th, someone asking for help. And when police arrived on the location, they found a 12-year-old girl with open wounds and duct tape around the extremities. And that's not all. They were led to another house and found the sister in a similar way. And before all of this came out, there were people who watched their videos accusing them of all of this. There was this video they uploaded where their son is talking about sleeping on a beanbag for the last seven months because of a prank he pulled on his younger brother. My bedroom was taken away for seven months and then you give it back like a couple weeks ago. I don't think our viewers know that. You've been sleeping on a beanbag. I've been sleeping on a beanbag since October. <laughs> oh, I'll give you the reason why I lost my bedroom. I woke Russell up at two in the morning and told him that we're going to Disneyland and he has to pack. After seeing this, people started a petition that got millions of signatures and eventually made CPS go to their house, but they found nothing wrong because that woman has them trained. I bet they don't even dream of her in a bad way because they're afraid she's gonna find out and beat them. But this wasn't the only time where people felt like she was going too far. If you look up 8 Passengers deleted videos, there are a lot of videos from two years ago showing how passively evil the mom is. It's literally like the Daddy05 situation, except people aren't gonna work as swiftly against you when you look like you can afford a lawyer and not have one be appointed to you. But two years go by and thankfully something happens, and it's scary to see how comfortable the mom was with telling us all of this. Like here's a clip of her saying, how she basically wants her kid to starve. I just got a text message uh, from Eve's teacher. She said that Eve did not pack a lunch today and can I bring a lunch over to the school? Um, but I, I responded and just said, Eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning and she actually told me she did pack a lunch. So the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry. Hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. And they had more than 2 million subscribers and in that time the most that happened was a visit from CPS that led nowhere. Thankfully their channels are deleted and the judge has denied them bail. I mean who wouldn't? They had duct tape on them like they escaped from their kidnappers. These kids were so hungry they didn't even ask for help. They asked for food and water. They're like hey can you give us some food and water so that when my mom finds out you gave us food and water I would have had enough food and water to break out and ask for more food and water. The oldest daughter, who also has a YouTube channel, made a statement on her Instagram and said, Me and my family are so glad justice is being served. We've been trying to tell the police and CPS for years about this, and so glad they finally decided to step up. Imagine telling someone about this, and it takes who knows how long for them to do anything. The social workers who went in the house and did nothing, after being sent there for the sole purpose of checking out a petition that had millions of signatures on it, should be punished also. Even if they didn't get anything from asking the kids, there is more than enough video evidence for them to do something. She starves her kids as punishment. They live in America, not fucking Guantanamo Bay. See you guys Monday. Peace.